that I call my studio. It's my happy place. Today I wanted to talk to you about what I think is the single most important factor in becoming a better artist. Okay, sure. I went over some drawing techniques in my last video, which you could subscribe and go check out. No matter what type of artwork, painting, drawing, sculpture, whatever it is, the single most important factor is your mindset, your attitude. So Pablo Picasso once said, every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once they grow up. So if you're a grown up watching this, I'm gonna try to help you get back to that place. Now, if you're a kid watching this, you're probably thinking, hey, cool, I'm already a kid. I don't have to worry about it. Well, not so fast. Truth is, I've been a teacher for nearly 20 years, a regular classroom teacher and an art teacher in elementary schools. And if there's one thing I've been seeing over and over and over throughout the years, it's this. Is this okay? I did it wrong. I can't draw. Whoa, 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 whoa. Everybody just chill. This is art. It's supposed to be fun. So here's four steps that are going to help you get back to having a little bit more fun and not getting frustrated and freaked out. The biggest reason for instead of is feeling like if your work isn't perfect, then it's bad. But there's one little problem with that. There's no such thing as perfect in art. So maybe you're trying to draw a circle and it didn't come out as round as you wanted it to. Does that make it wrong? Okay, if you're in math class and you're trying to draw a circle and it's not really round and you're measuring diameter, yeah, it's gonna be wrong. But not in art class. Here, it's just your version of a circle. And if you're not happy with it, you can draw another one. That's okay. I bet anything you draw, if you only drew it one time in your entire life, you're probably not gonna be very happy with it. And just like anything else in life, it takes work to get better at it. But guess what? The work is actually fun when you're doing artwork. So if you focus more on just doing the process of the artwork and not worry too much about the final outcome, your final product will end up looking better. Art history is filled with rebels. In 1905, a group of French Impressionists were called the Fauves. That's French for wild beast, because the art critics of the day thought that their paintings were too colorful and must have been painted by wild animals. Jackson Pollock blew the doors off every gallery in the United States in the 50s by just dripping paint all over a canvas. Andy Warhol confused everybody by painting Campbell's soup cans and Coke bottles. And of course, everybody just thought Van Gogh was playing crazy back in the day. So what's the point to all this? Well, if people like your art, that's great. And if they look at your art and go, well, that just means you're a little bit ahead of your time. Everybody else hasn't quite caught up to you yet. But that's okay. Either way, you can't lose. Maybe someday there'll be art classes teaching people how to paint in your style. Art teachers and art classes, and hopefully art videos, are gonna teach you some skills that are gonna help your drawing, which is great. 
but don't be afraid to take those ideas and twist them around a little bit and make it yours. You're the boss of your artwork. The thing that I struggled with for a really long time, and I didn't do any artwork at all, like zero artwork for about 10 years because of this, figuring out what to draw or paint. There is nothing more intimidating than a blank canvas or piece of paper. Don't stare at me. So you know you want to draw something, you know you want to paint something, make a sculpture, whatever type of artwork you want to do, but you don't know what you want to make. So, the best way to get over that hump and go ahead and just do it is just start drawing something or painting something. Hey, I know, I know, it sounds crazy. If you have a snowball at the top of a hill and you roll it down the hill, give it a little push, and it starts rolling down the hill, it's going to pick up other snow. It's going to start getting bigger and bigger and go faster and faster. And next thing you know, you've got a huge avalanche coming down the mountain. But if you don't push it, it's just going to sit there. And it's going to eventually melt. So, how do you give that snowball a nudge and get it going downhill? Here's a few ways. Get yourself a sketch pad scratch paper, just a plain old piece of paper, and just start doodling. Don't worry about what it looks like. Maybe just start putting some shapes together and just sketching something out. And next thing you know, it's gonna have some sort of a, a, a picture there that you might say, oh, that gives me an idea. Another part of that that keeps people from actually doing this is they get worried about messing up their sketch pad. Don't buy a super expensive sketch pad. I got this one, sorry to turn this into a commercial. I got this one at Dollar Tree. Guess how much it cost. Oh, you're good. I don't have to worry about it. If I draw on a piece of paper and I don't like it, whatever, I move on to the next one, no problem. All right, next nudge. Go ahead and close your eyes. No, really, go ahead and close your eyes. And then open them and the first thing you see that's what you draw. Although you're probably gonna end up drawing me on your phone or TV or whatever, which is just kind of weird right now. So maybe do it another time, okay? But just whatever the first thing is that you see, just kind of turn around, look. Oh, okay, I'm gonna draw my car. Because I'm in the garage, that's what I see. Whatever, to, turn the channels on the TV, switch channels, and then pause on something, and then draw it. Flip through a magazine or a newspaper. Draw whatever you come up with. Just start drawing some stuff. Just practice and have some fun with it. Another really good one. Sit down in front of a mirror and draw a self-portrait of yourself. Now, just me telling you these three probably gives you an idea for another one. And that's how this all works. Once you get started, once you take that step, once you give that snowball a little nudge, then things get rolling more ideas start to come. So go invent your own if you want to. However, whichever one you use, just do something. So now you figured out what you want to draw. That's great. But what's next? Okay, so let's for instance say I whipped up this really fast picture of a dinosaur. I like my picture of a dinosaur. That's great. I figured out I wanted to draw a dinosaur. I drew a dinosaur. Now you gotta ask yourself one more question. What if, what if I didn't draw it with pen? What if I did a painting? What if I made a sculpture? Oh, I know. What if I made a sculpture oh, out of aluminum foil? Made this dinosaur with this. All right, let me see. Uh, hey! Look at that. That was fast. There is absolutely no end to what you could do with this. As long as you keep asking, what if, 
What if I took that thing I just did and created something else? What if I change this? What if I don't do this? What if I add this other thing? There are so many different possibilities. As long as you keep saying, what if, even if you did dinosaurs, and that's all you ever did, there is an infinite number of possibilities with how you could actually make the dinosaurs. So, not worrying about being perfect. Learn the rules so you can break them. Get that snowball rolling and asking what if. Are these the only four things that you need to do to kind of get your mind in the right mindset for art? No, there's probably hundreds of other things you could be doing. But these are four that are fairly simple that you can get started with getting that snowball rolling downhill right away. All right, so get out there, get going on some artwork, ask what if, come up with something new that nobody else has ever seen before. And, uh, hey, actually, you know what, I got an idea. Uh, what if, what, ooh, hey, this paper company. What if I put it inside of here to kind of make it bigger and then I paint the whole thing red? Ooh, all right, go have fun. I'm gonna do this. I'll see you guys later. All right, let's see, how do I do this? See you next time. Hey, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you're seeing, go ahead and subscribe down below and check out some of my other videos. There's another one all about basic art techniques that works very well with this one. And I hope to see you around. Take care.